Here we go. I'm good right here. It's not this type of show. Thank you, everybody. Have a seat. Welcome to the show. The weather, I, the weather has been such a deterrent, and I get it. It is cold, or it's snowing, or this or that, so we appreciate the hardy Minnesotans who drove in today and did not cancel. Yeah, I get it. The roads are, I mean, you know better than anyone, the roads have been awful lately. They just got real bad, too. Oh, Sorry. My. I was just looking at the cameras. Don't, audience, Sorry. don't worry. We'll provide you all with Siberian Huskies to get out of here. Yeah. Well, uh, or, or I'll take you home myself. I'll, I'll drive you all home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a horrible driver, but we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you doing? Good. I'm just, you're a bad driver? No, I'm actually, um, knock on glass. I've, glass. I've only really, <laughs> I've, uh, I shouldn't jinx myself, but I haven't had a ticket in years. I mean, really, in years. I, yeah, I'm a pretty good driver. Crashes? I mean, I have road rage, but I have, yeah, I do. You know me, I, my, what's my biggest pet peeve in Left life? Left lane drivers. Left lane drivers that drive slow in the passing lane, I'm telling you. But I'm not going to get off on that because I'm in a really good mood today. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because. Let's move on. We, yeah. Shane knows how to get me worked up. But uh, <laughs> we are really excited today, and these folks picked a good day to be here because we have cheered for him. We have rooted for him. We have been proud of him. I knew he was going to be a professional before he was even named. I said, they're going to make him a professional. Dancing with the Stars, Alan Burstyn is here. <laughs> going to be sitting there. Yeah, which is so cool. Our executive producer just got done talking to him in the green room. He's as nice as you want him to be. And I knew he would be. Of I course mean, he is. His brother, Gene, you guys know if you watch the show, is a good, good friend of ours. Uh, his dance studio in, in, in uh, Southdale does great dance with us, America. I believe is what it's called. And uh, look, it runs in the family. Gene's a dancer, Alan's a dancer, and he's on tour with the Dancing with the Stars tour at the State Theater. So we'll talk to him about that. So I'm so excited. Um, just a little, little. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, what, 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 what? Well, I just walked by the green room, you know, just kind of peeked. And he smells really good. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. He's going to add that in there. That's right. Smell o vision. Smell o vision. And I think he's <laughs> single. Is he, is he single? I don't know. Well, we, we will we, find we out. We know it didn't work out with Alexa. That's right. We'll find out if he is. And then what we'll do is we'll put his phone number right on the bottom of the screen <laughs> for you. Yeah. And he just left. Just kidding. Yeah. He just I left. Know. He is now he's leaving gone. the green room. No, no. <laughs> so that more uh, coming up. And by the way, speaking of shows this week, I want to tell you we're all a little excited. We don't want to oversell this, but we're all a little excited about Friday's show because, you know, we get a lot of questions. Oh, what's this? And how do you guys do that? So we're doing a Jason Show staff kind of life hack show. Shane, you get the most, this is so funny to me. What do people ask you almost more than anything? How I curl my hair, like the type of curls. Yeah, so Shane is gonna walk you through that. I always say for me, uh, I only make two really good things. I can make a really good Southern biscuit, Alabama. I make homemade, uh, <laughs> I make delicious homemade biscuits and gravy, which I've made on the show before. And I also make a foolproof, delicious filet mignon. And I will show you, yeah. So I'll show you, you're, you'll be in my kitchen. Uh, we shot a little piece of my house, so we'll be cooking for you. That's Friday show. But right now, speaking of food, let's get to the hot dish. Here we go, everybody. Hold on my spoon. Go like that. Oh, I should say, too, if you're wondering if you're a usual viewer and you're like, Jason, why are you guys on the couch again? The big screen still sick, still broken. So that's why we're over here, I know. And looking worse for wear. I know, I'm serious. Well, we're learning a little bit more about what the Oscars plan to do to move things along, because you know it's like 80 hours usually. Here's the deal, yesterday a private lunch was held for the nominees, the very fancy Oscars luncheon. Mm. Some of the headlines that came out of the lunch include, winners will now have just 90 seconds. Nine, thank you, 90, thank you lady, uh, in the back row. They're just gonna have 90 seconds from the time they are announced to run on the stage, give their speech before the music starts playing. No. The Academy wants to keep the show to three hours. Now, 
So that I know we're gonna actually. You know what? Can I just tell you? Well, I'll continue with this. We thought it would be funny. Maybe we'll do it later in the week. This was your idea, or no? Was who? Ted. Somebody's idea. Our producer Ted said we're gonna put Aaron Schwab in a really fancy evening gown, and we're gonna make her. We're gonna time this. We're gonna put her in the back of the set, and we're gonna make her walk all the way across in a fancy tight evening gown to see how long it takes. And then walk up like yeah, six walk stairs. Walk up six stairs. Then we'll make Aaron give an acceptance speech and try to get off stage within within 90 seconds and see how that works. Yeah, it's ridiculous. This is, this is not fair either because yep. women are in these big fancy dresses yep. where they can't move or breathe, and then men can just stroll up in their suits. So I think women need an extra minute. Yeah, I th th thank you. One You're extra welcome. minute for women. Well, uh, now here. So that's that's a <laughs> stupid idea. That's if you're gonna cut if you're gonna cut time, that's not when you you should cut. People want those Sally Field moments. Well, here's where they're getting it right. Certain categories, I told them, certain categories will also be announced during the commercial breaks and then edited down and aired later in the show. I've been saying this for four years. The first wave of presenters were also announced. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg's going to be there, J-Lo, Tina Fey, and Amy Poehler, Constance Wu, Chris Evans, and Daniel Craig. Mr. Bond will be there. So some good okay. presenters. I like yeah. that, yeah. But... I don't want to belabor this point, but uh, bravo to you, Academy, because I say this with the utmost respect for the behind the scenes folks. Like, you know, we have our crew here. We couldn't have a TV show without them, but here is that we couldn't. And they, movies couldn't be made. Movies couldn't be made without costume designers and sound editors. But again, for the 80th time, you put the Oscars on television and it is a broad cast. So you need to keep it broad. And Betty from Anoka, doesn't give a rat's rear who wins sound editing. I'm sorry, <laughs> she doesn't care. You know what I mean? So put those awards in the commercial break. If you're going to put it on television, you got to make it entertaining for the masses. And the masses don't care about 20% of those awards. So that's where you keep it moving. Yeah. When did you do your spiel? Was it last year, right after the I awards? did the spiel last year. I, mean, he I had a list. Off. I had a comprehensive yes, seven did. point plan of how to fix the Oscars. <laughs> I think they, they did two. To a they few did of two those. of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next in the dish, Nick Cannon. You know, if you watched our, our girl Wendy Williams right here on uh, Fox Nine, if you watch us locally, Nick Cannon filled in for Wendy yesterday and right away talked about uh, her absence. Look at this. Y'all, I gotta say it. Everybody want to know. I spoke to Wendy. <laughs> I talked to her, and honestly, she sounded amazing, y'all. She. We jumped on the phone, and first thing she said, Nick Cannon, how you doing? <laughs> I didn't go out that right time. So, and honestly, I, I didn't know what to expect at first, but her spirit was so big. It was so amazing. <laughs> and you know what was also really awesome? We had, I had a conversation with her and her whole family, and she said she wanted to speak as a family unit. Her, I talked to Kevin, little Kevin. They said they all good. The love and the passion is still there, because that's what you need in times like this. Is your family to stick together with you? And mm -hmm. Yes. So, Nick, Nick, who was on our show a couple of months ago, Nick will fill in today and tomorrow. Other go a guest hosts for the next two weeks include Jason Biggs, Kiki Palmer, Sherry Shepard, Michael Rappaport, and Jerry O'Connell, a Wendy favorite. Yeah, that's a good, that is a good lineup, yeah. yeah. Wendy, if you guys don't know, if you haven't been keeping up, Wendy is on leave following complications with Graves' disease. And we still don't know. They didn't, uh, Nick didn't announce how long she is going to be out. She should be out as long as it takes her to feel better. But, you know, I was noticing we can't, it's the elephant in the room. And I think everyone's going, hmm, is the fact that, you know, there have been rumors by some gossip sites about the fact that it's maybe not just Wendy's health. There might be some family issues, too. I think that's why Nick went out of his way to talk oh. about the family being together. Because I'm sure if it, it, Wendy being sick, the last thing Wendy wants to deal with, too, is hearing a swirling of rumors about her family. When you are sick, that is the last thing you want to deal with, you know? So It's been going on for a long time, uh, right? The rumors have been going on for a while, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I wonder if she'll address it when she comes back. I still don't know. Maybe she'll just, you know, I was gonna say, just never explain, nope. never complain, Move I guess. Through. Yeah. Next in the dish, live TV musicals uh, became quite the thing back in 2013. Remember The Sound of Music Live with Carrie Underwood on NBC? Mm -hmm, I do. But a series of... Uh, <laughs> I love Carrie. The hills are alive. But a series, a series of poorly rated musicals may change that. The Peacock, NBC, has announced it has scrapped plans 
to broadcast a live version of Hair. The network was planning to broadcast the production of Hair on May 19th. So, girl, they were deep into the production. The, yeah, and wow. it was going to run opposite the finales for Game of Thrones and American Idol. <laughs> That's a horrible idea. Uh, by the way, <laughs> dear networks, the night of the Game of Thrones uh, uh, finale, y'all better put on, like, Mighty Mouse reruns. Because, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Why try? No, put on some old Beverly Hillbillies, because nobody's going to be watching. They were just hoping HBO would... Like, turn like off for the night, yeah. Too many people, yeah. If you guys don't know, Hair tells the story of a group of politically active hippies living in a bohemian life uh, in New York while resisting the Vietnam War. Now, this comes, this announcement, this was no surprise, comes after the network already put the production of Bye Bye Bye, or Bye Bye Bye, of Bye Bye Birdie <laughs> on hold. And here's the deal. These, these, when Sound of Music happened, and it got great ratings. I think it was something like, Jeff, what was 34 million or something like that? It was something around that. Every network was like, ooh, let's make a musical. And some were a success, like Grease here on Fox got good ratings. Rent on Fox, not so much. Here's the deal. If you're going to do these musicals, go after a title. Again, going back to broadcast, go back to get a title that everybody will love. You know what I mean? Hair and Rent. Hair and Rent. Hair and Rent, though great musicals themselves, they are niche, it's a niche programming. Get something like Wicked, which I think a lot of people would watch. You know what I mean? Or Hamilton, or get a show that, that is, you know, more broadly liked then. Because these are expensive, Shane. Well, I didn't even, I thought hair was hairspray up until we had our meeting today. No, no. <laughs> so and, it's different. And if you've seen hair, you know there's a lot, not, not lots of naked people in hair. And you, oh yeah. You didn't know that? They were going to do a live naked musical? I think they put him in shadow. Uh, Aaron, have you been in, uh, Aaron Schwab, have you been in hair? No. Yeah, Aaron directed hair. Oh, very fancy, Aaron Schwab. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, in the in the productions, there are naked people. Huh. Yeah. So how were they going to do that on NBC? It was question. like, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, speaking of Aaron Schwab, I'm just going to tell you, you better stay tuned because we have a really good show. You'll see why right now. Back after this. Coming up, Virgin No More. You know, for this case, I'll make the exception. <laughs> Is Colton getting naughty early in the season? And did a fan favorite go home? All of your Bachelor questions will be answered. Then, he's our Minnesota star on Dancing with the Stars. Our special in-studio guest today, pro Alan Burstyn, is here. We're going to talk about the show, the Dancing with the Stars tour, and maybe one little question about his love life. <laughs> and our other special guest is a special member of our Jason Show family. Aaron Schwab is singing for y'all. That's all coming up, so stay right there. And I hear on ABC, by the way, we had a new episode of The Bachelor, which to me is even bigger than the Super Bowl. You know, there's a young woman named Elise on The Bachelor who tonight proved herself to be simultaneously the smartest and dumbest contestant in Bachelor history. I want the time and attention that a relationship deserves. I can't. I mean, like, literally can't accept a proposal after a few months of sharing your time and attention with other people. I can't do it. He's like, well, I'm, that makes sense, but that's kind of the idea of the show. It's <laughs> Kinda, yeah. The field of eligible women slowly getting narrowed down, and Colton and the ladies head to Thailand on this week's episode of The Bachelor. Here to help us break down what happened, our Bachelor experts, Shane and producer Ted Johnson, everybody. Hello, panel. Well, hello. hello. Hello, stars. Uh, <laughs> let's get right to it, because I see four big things here. First, let's talk about Heather. Uh, and Heather is the one that, she's never been kissed, right? Correct. Supposedly. Supposedly, she's never been. Are we doubting that story, Shane? Well, well let's. The audience we'll, is we'll, not buying this. We'll build up yeah. to it. Okay. Because she told Colton today, or yesterday, that she dated a guy for eight months. And they didn't kiss in eight months. Yeah. Liar. Come right? on. Come hard, on. Hard to believe. Yeah, I mean, it's that stretching. This is the date here. 
under yeah. the fireworks. And of course he made her wait. We knew that there was going to happen eventually. It took forever and we we're all just sitting here like, okay, when can this kiss be over with? And it seemed very comfortable. Well, yeah, she I don't doesn't... know, my first kiss wasn't real comfortable. I was also a little younger than her, but... Yeah, because how she's like, what, in her late 20s or something? Uh, no, so, probably like 23. 26, okay, yeah. She's she's a baby. Uh, let's move to Elise. Uh, Elise cannot handle herself anymore. I mean, when you sign up for these shows, right, you, you expect there's going to be other women. You're going to be dating him, but... And this is the one Kimmel was just making this, fun of. Yeah, okay. so she was a favorite. I mean, she was one of the front runners. She seemed and, very normal. Yeah, she was the probably the most normal one out of all of them. Mm -hmm. And she's just, she left. She eliminated herself. This yep. happens every season. There's like one who cannot handle sharing once they have those feelings for the person. Okay, so when that happens, do we still get a rose ceremony at the end of the show? We well, didn't this time. We didn't get, get it this time. Uh, well, They're I would feel very cheated. Wait. I mean, if I watch The Bachelor, yeah. I want a rose ceremony at the end. That's yeah. One of my beefs, yep. That's yeah. That's my pet peeve. Yeah. I, you got you got to clo close out the close show out the with show. a rose ceremony. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, um, let's talk about, what's her name? Cassie? Mm -hmm. Cassie? Mm -hmm. Why is Cassie on my card this week? She got her first one-on-one. -on -one. She got her first date. Okay, and what happened in that one-on-one? -on -one? They made out on a boat, on a beach, in the water, and somehow ended up in bed. It is uh, not fantasy sweet time either. They I were in a bed, Mr. Virgin, mid -se this is it right here? And they are nestled deep in those covers, like they're not on top of it. And I rewound this because I'm like, okay, well maybe like- I love that you like, rewound this too. Maybe <laughs> yeah. someone stumbled and fell into bed and they just stayed in there. <laughs> Nope, they were just talking and then cut to them in bed. Like, it never explains, like, how that happened. But they remained clothed. I mean, from what we saw, yes. Yeah. But Colton had, like, the worst quote ever. And maybe it was taken out of context, but he just said, I just want to go all in. And it was like... <laughs> no, 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 yeah, 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 no, 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 no. I think you he... don't say that in that moment. Nope. No, no. Did he look comfortable, like, kissing a woman in a bed? <laughs> I am asking the question you want to know. I'm just saying. It. Thank you, audience. I would say it looked pretty heated. Did he look? Did I it look heated? So. Okay. Right? Yeah. No. I mean, yes. Yeah. No. He looked fine. Okay. Okay. I would be more. I would be more concerned. You're selling about it, Ted. You're really selling it. <laughs> wearing jeans and under the covers and yeah. I yeah, just, that's uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Finally, two women <laughs> argue uh, the second half of the show, and then. Colton is done. He's he's had it with the arguing. And this is why we didn't get a rose ceremony because these two who are have no chance of winning the show Correct. go at it for the last half hour of the show and we're who cares? And it's like a petty fight and I just wanted him to walk over so bad and say both bye of you bye. go home. Yeah, go okay. ahead. And it leave. was a bad game of telephone. One said, "Oh, she said she just is using you to get out of Miami." She said, "No, no, that didn't happen." Oh god, I'm bored already. That. Right? Oh, um, yeah. Give it up for Shane and Ted, everybody. No wonder they are good. I would send both of them home. Still ahead, everybody, a popular late night host expands his family. I bet you haven't heard this one. And later, he's become a star thanks to the a popular primetime show. Our, uh, we've rooted for him for years. Alan Burstyn is in our studio talking about dancing with the stars. We'll be right back, everybody. I just want to say, will he be wearing? Of red carpets, Laura, you had a moment on the, on the red carpet. You got a photo with a brilliant comedian and director, Bo Burnham, and uh, you posted this photo. Now, can you explain this photo? What? What? Yes. Why? Do, why do we have this in front of us? Bo Burnham has established that he looks just like Laura Dern, but only Laura Dern in Jurassic Park. Right. And as you can see, he's absolutely right. Yeah. He does. That's he good. does. That's good. I love Laura Dern. I cannot wait for Big Little Lies season two. I'm oh, there's a lot of great shows coming up yeah. in the spring that I can't wait for. Well, more late night news. Congratulations are in order, and I'm sure unless you have not turned on media this morning, you you have heard this. Uh, congratulations for Andy Cohen. The host announced on Instagram overnight. He is the father of a baby boy, Benjamin. Yeah. Benjamin, Benjamin Allen Cohen came in at nine pounds, two ounces. 
And is that's a big baby. Mm -hmm. And is named after Andy's grandfather. Andy in his post, it was really sweet. Andy says he's in love, speechless, and eternally grateful to an incredible surrogate. Absolutely, yeah. And about to be eternally tired. Eternally, yeah. His life, because <laughs> you know, he is Mr. Social. You know, he, he's out. Uh, his life is about to change uh, quite dramatically with that baby. I guess he'll have a few nannies. So I've been asking because obviously I haven't given birth and I never will. Oh. Uh, you think? Fun fact, yeah. Uh, <laughs> now I've been asking around nine pounds. That's a quality baby. That's, that's yeah, a that's a that healthy is an baby. Ample, it's a very that's an healthy ample baby. baby. I think seven pounds is about normal. Do you remember what you were? If you don't mind me asking. They were both seven pounds. No, you. Seven. You were about seven. Yeah, I wasn't a big kid. Were you big? Well. Yeah, I mean, come on. You have a large uh, head. But no, I was uh, eight. I was, I think, eight two. Is okay. that big? That's a little. No, well, that's pretty average. Yeah. yeah. My mom said I look like like a sweet potato. You know, it just kind of, <laughs> just kind of came out. It's like, hey. <laughs> uh, next. <laughs> so sweet. I know, isn't she? My little uh, sweet Next to the dish, I got the chance to see the new season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Uh, Bravo sent a little screener, and well, here's a little clip from the trailer, and we'll talk about it. Someone is hell-bent on getting this Dorit story out there. They're all trying to make me feel like I'm a terrible person. Oh! It's our very own private island. Damn, Dorit. No, you her. Do not call my swan a can we get some more Rolexes on the rocks? No salt. <laughs> A hot air balloon will be picking you up at noon. <laughs> this really make you feel like you're in Europe. We are in Europe, Dorit. We are in Europe, Dorit. So, like I said, I saw episode one of this season. I don't, you know me, I don't like ruin show, ruining shows for people, so no spoiler alerts. All I will say is, um, I sound like a Bachelor promo. It's the most dramatic episode. It, but <laughs> I will, I, I, all, here's what I'll say. The first scene, the first scene is like, if you've watched this franchise, you are immediately like, holy crap. Because it is a fight that they open with. Like, they come out of the credits, boom. And you are in a fight of people that you, you've never seen fight before. And it gets incredibly uncomfortable and then it kind of rewinds back and you see throughout the season what leads into this fight that was almost like sad to watch. It was uncomfortable. You're like, Ooh, why are they fighting? And it looked great. And Denise Richards joins the cast and she's new this year. And I thought, oh, I, when new housewives come on, I'm always a little like, oh, let's uh, kind of wait and see. Love her already. She fits in perfectly. Yeah. I like her. Yeah. So I still miss, uh, I still miss Eileen Davidson. I love her so much from, oh yeah. And speaking of which, I don't want to bring the party down, but I just want to send thoughts. Speaking of Eileen and soap operas, that Christoph St. John story just yeah. broke my heart. 52 years old. So sending thoughts and prayers uh, to the family over there at Y&R and, and his family, obviously, as well. Still ahead, everybody. Alan Burstyn is in the house. We're talking Dancing with the Stars and more when we come back. Back after this, friends. 52. My grandpa. We've been talking about him for years. Well, our next guest. Our next guest heats up the dance floor every season on the hit ABC show Dancing with the Stars. Just last season, Alan Burstyn came close, so close, to winning the trophy with his celebrity partner, Alexis. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alan just said, yep, that's the clip we're using, yep. That's, that's a good one. Isn't that's it? Alan Sexy Salsa. Yeah. We cheer him on every single week. Because Alan, if you don't know, and you haven't heard me say it every day, <laughs> is a Minnesota native, and he's back in his home state for the Dancing with the Stars Tour, hitting the State Theater tonight. Give it up Woo! for Alan Burstyn, everybody. Hi, buddy. Oh, nice to finally meet I'm you. I'm so excited I, I can be here. So for people that don't know, and I, I forgot, we've been following you throughout the years on the show. Tell people, 
You filled in for Max, right? So I've been on the show for like five years. I first filled in with Mark, with Paige Van Zandt. Oh, seriously? Yeah, I did one dance with her. And then I filled in with Max, for Max, for like four weeks with Heather Morris. And then I got my first partner, Debbie Gibson. And right the next season. The next season, yeah. Now, I know you're a very nice and you're a very humble guy, but let me ask you this, because I remember us doing the show, and the weeks you filled in for Max, we would come on the air and I would say, he is going to be a pro. They're going to make him a pro next year. Did you have an inkling when you saw the reaction? Don't be humble, Alan. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's so Did secret. You, TV is so secret. Yeah. I had no idea. You had no idea? I got that phone call. I remember I was actually on a golf course with Max. We were playing a, a Oh, seriously? Golf, and I got the call from our uh, casting director, and she's like, are you ready? I was like, I don't know if I'm ready. Yeah. She's like, you're going to be a pro. And I instantly started crying. I called my mom. She was crying. You called Gene? And I called Gene. Yeah. It was amazing. It was... And, and Max, I love, Max has been kind of, uh, not kind of, a really nice mentor for you, haven't you, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Max and Val, they're such yeah. good people. I've known them while growing up and competing. You know, Gene used to compete against them while we were in the competition circuit. And it's so nice to have such a good mentor. Yeah. You know, both of them, Max and Val, are such good friends to me, and they help me so much. Because you literally, I, I, people, I say, oh, he's from Minnesota, but you were... You started at a young age dancing here. How young were you? Yeah, so I started at the age of seven. And we actually have a dance studio here. I know you yeah. mention all the time, Dance With Us America. It's in South Del Mall. And it's so nice. I'm actually going to be there tomorrow. You're going to be there tomorrow. Off. Yeah, yeah. Little. And it's, it is a family. I, when Gene's on the show, it is a family affair. I mean, yeah. the, the whole family's involved. I mean, my, my dad can't dance, but... <laughs> He's going he's gonna to call me right after this. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I can dance. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, the whole family, our sister also dances. Now she's a pharmacist. But, you know, it's something that, yeah. That she, is a switch. Yeah. I thought you wouldn't notice if I said it fast enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, that's really good yeah. if she's a pharmacist. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a family affair. And, you know, family is the most important thing ever. So it's so nice that, you know, the whole family loves that I'm on the show. You know, they get to talk to me. They get the inside scoop yeah. before everyone else. You know. What is for you, what is the best part? Because we, we watch it every day. We, we watch the clips, like the one that we just showed. <laughs> for you, what is the best part of being on the show? For you, what do you, get, what do you pull the most joy? Is it the partnership with your partners? Is it the, the, the other pros, the friendship, the family with the crew? What, what's the best part of That's it? That's such a good question because there's so many aspects yeah. of the show. You know, we are truly a family. I'm on tour with 11 of some of the best dancers in the world. Yeah. And we spend 24 seven together. You know, for the past five years, I haven't left these dancer sides. Yeah. Um, but then I think one of the best experiences is creating this connection with the partner. You know, someone who's never danced before, they come on our show, they're super vulnerable, and they just have so much trust in you. And we get to take them on this journey of teaching them how to dance in front of millions of people. The, the schedule is crazy, and we were talking in the meeting before, and I was thinking of all the things that, as a viewer, like what people would want to know. What is the craziest day of the week for oh, you? By far, Tuesday. Why? Because we just got safe. We're safe for the next week on okay. Monday. And Tuesday morning, I already have three meetings you know, deciding what dance I'm going to do, what song, what costumes, how we're going to choreograph. And so by the time I see my partner on Tuesday, I've been working for like 10 hours already. So what time do you usually wake up? Give me, walk me through, like what time, like on Tuesday. So the show's over on Monday. You're yeah. live. And again, the show is live, yeah, people. Yeah, the show is live. So you're done. You go home after the show. Maybe. I, mean, I don't really sleep much after because I'm yeah. so excited after getting safe for the week. <laughs> and then Tuesday you wake up and what's Bam. the meetings? Uh, I look at my phone and I'm like, oh God, this is the song I have this week. <laughs> oh, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> or this is the song I have this week. Yeah. I'm so excited. You know, it, there's, it's so much fun because the time is so short. You know, the time frame to create a dance and teach a celebrity. We don't really get our music until the day before. So everything is like a real rush. I've always wanted to ask one of the pros too, are you thinking, are you thinking when you're crafting your, your dance, because I really think it's an art what you do, it is an art. When you're crafting the dance, do you keep the pet peeves of the judges in mind? Like oh, you know Lynn likes oh, this. Do you keep it in absolutely. mind? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, you know, you don't do the lift because Carrie Ann's gonna get upset. You, you gotta have that content, otherwise Lynn's gonna get grumpy. <laughs> and then you gotta have a little bit of pizzazz for, for Bruno. Bruno. I mean, yeah, you got Bruno. it. Alan is uh, Alan's gonna stick around for another segment. Get another cup of coffee. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this.
Stay with us. <laughs> Sass for Bruno. Yeah. And then, so then Tuesday happens, and then. Welcome right, everybody. We are back. We're dancing with the stars, professional Minnesotan Woo. Alan Burstyn. I love that you. I, I've said this behind your back, and I've said it on the show. I love that you, and I've said this to your brother. I love that you represent Minnesota. You represent us because you're just such a good guy. I mean, oh. we're, we were talking in the break about. Alan and I were talking to the break about people being genuine and it comes across. It comes across with you. Thank I mean, you it so really much. does. I think it, it, it people, you, I don't think you can fake the uh, genuine, your true genuine nature and it comes across. Thank so, you so much. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be part of the Minnesota family. Oh, well, we, well, believe me, we are proud. Talk, uh, I was saying, he's here, not just to be on the show, he's here for the tour. Uh, what's, what's, what's it like being on the tour and what's the show structure like? You know, I am so excited that I get to come back to Minnesota and dance live in front of your you know, hometown audience. Oh. Not only that, but my family gets to come and watch me. We're at the State Theater tonight, and it's been incredible. You know, our tour is 69 shows. Uh, we've been on the road since December 15th. We're done March 9th. Look it's, at the, the production value, yeah. Alan, is tremendous. Look at that. I mean, I think we really try to encapsulate the, the live show of Dancing with the Stars and bring it to everyone, just because everyone, if I can say so, everyone loves the show. It's so much yeah. fun. There's, it's just so good-hearted. It's great. one of those universal concepts that yeah. everybody, and it's a cliche, but you literally can watch the show with every member of your family. You and know what I mean? And that's one of that's the coolest parts. You know, when we're in the meet and greets, I meet four generations of these families who watch together and they're at the meet and greet together. And like every Monday night, we sit down and we watch it. We turn off our phones and no one can talk to us. We just watch the show. And that's so humbling and so awesome. Uh, talking about the meet and greet and going back to being just a, you know, a nice Midwest guy, was it weird when you became a pro, and I thought about this, when I started seeing your name, like, you know, uh, paparazzi started following you, I thought to myself, because I know how Minnesotans are, was it weird when people started caring about your personal life? Yeah, actually. I thought, <laughs> it, I, I wondered about you. I was like, this must be so weird for him. I'm usually a private guy. Yes. And still not used yeah, to it. Yeah, still not used yeah. to it. But, you well, know, it's, it's funny, like, especially during this season, whenever, like, every Monday and Tuesday, I would post a picture and just like leave my phone and not read the comments. You know, don't, don't, read don't, the comments. don't read the comments. Never read the comments. Yeah. No, 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 no. But no. It's, it's funny. It's 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 so strange the the strange the attention you get from it. But it's all been really positive. So I'm really thankful for that. And it's you know I like to give back. So when like the paparazzi's like, hey, let's take a photo. I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. Why well, not? <laughs> speaking speaking of photos, Alan. Now I I was raised to never ask someone what they make in a job. But I'm, I'm thinking they need to pay you a little bit more because we noticed you can't afford clothes because <laughs> this is a collection. We went through your Instagram. Not only can we, we not afford clothes, we ran out of shaving cream, so we <laughs> yeah. all had mustaches. Our producers, <laughs> went through, our producers went through your Instagram and they're like, we can't find one picture with Alan with clothes on. So you know, it was really cold here. a montage here. here, yeah. It was really cold in Minnesota, I decided. To yeah. That one was just, I just didn't want to wear a shirt. That, that day, yeah. <laughs> Are you in front of a train that day? A moving train. Who the hell other than Alan is almost <laughs> naked in front of a train? I'm sure the conductor was, was really like, shocked what is, what's happening. What has he done? Yeah. Well, oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, the control and put it up one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, are you excited for the new season and I'm the fall? so excited. I mean, Especially after this last season, I made it to the finale for the first time. And that was, yeah. I'm just, and the junior season, I was so lucky. My, my little kids, they won the junior season. And that was honestly, that was one of the best moments ever. Yeah. Just because I got to teach the cutest little 10 year old girl who is a bad. Yeah, aid. yeah. I don't want to say that. No, she was. She is we the ran coolest the person in the yeah. world. She just won like a skate tournament. She's literally the best skateboarder in. She was like a little thirty-year-old in a little yeah. body. She was crazy. And she has like I don't know. I, I'm just so so lucky that I got to mentor this little girl. Well, the next time you're in town, please come back and visit us. I please, would love. Please. To. Don't forget, Dancing with the Stars live is tonight. Tonight at the tonight. State Theater in downtown Minneapolis. Go support Alan. Go to DWTSTour.com for more information. You can follow Alan on Instagram for all those pictures. And all we'll be right pictures. back. Aaron Schwab is performing when we return. Back in a moment. Thank you, my friend. That was so nice of you. I feel
talented person to another. Two more talented people. Was it? We always we always tell the people the real word about the stars. Yeah. How nice was Alan Burstyn? He is so nice, and he does smell. He smells like money. Doesn't, he smells yeah, good. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And his brother. Gene, yeah. Go if you want dance lessons. I forgot, Gene. I love you. Uh, dance with us, America, yeah. at Southdale Center. So good. Valentine's Day is approaching, and that means once again, I call her. She's my friend, but I call Aww. her the Bet Midler of the Twin Cities. She's gonna take the. That's right. She's gonna take the stage to sing all about. Love. 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 Welcome Damn. back to the show, Jay Fuchs and Aaron Schwab, everybody. It's me. That's me. I know. So this show, this show's all about love. So is it sad love? Is it like no, the carpenters like say goodbye is, to love? Yeah, or what we, we do doing here? all the loves. All the loves. We do all the different kinds because we know we want everybody to come and represent, right? Yeah. So we don't want you to feel like, oh, you have to come with your person and sit and drink wine and be lovey and stare gaze, you know, into each other's eyeballs. Because we want all the people. We want the people who love each other and are in love. And then we like to have like the groups of bitter people that yeah. come in who are like, whatever, Valentine's Day is the worst, right? And then we're like this, yes. I want you to know. Yeah. We'll yeah. sing that one, you know. So you cover the gamut. We cover the gamut. Yeah. So tell people, I, I, I mention as much as I can. I tell the studio audience, yeah. uh, you and Jay, kind of, you guys got a, a permanent gig, I guess it is. We do. Tell everybody the great venue that you're at. So um, that one is Birches in yeah. Lower Town, BirchesLowerTown.com, in case you want to look it up. Uh, yeah. Birches in Lower Town, we're there usually every Thursday and Friday. And it just so happens that we will be there doing one of our shows. We have two Valentine's shows. The other one One is. of them is going to be at um, Crooners, and one is at Birches. So the Crooners one is on the 12th. Right there. Yep, and then the Birch's show is, uh, they're, they're both dinner shows. One dinner is a part of a package. One, you get to pick whatever you want to eat. It's true. Um, and the Birch's Lower Town one has fondue. It's like a little bit more light and fun and loud and play and sing along. And the Crooner's one is a little more sit and have fun and listen in their beautiful back room. Elegant. Elegant. And as I, elegant as we can make it. People always ask, hey, I'm coming into the city. What, what should me and, me and my girlfriends do? The piano, oh, Curtis is great, but the piano bar at uh, is a Birch great is venue. And I've been there so fun. several times with friends. Yep. And I've, I didn't drink a thing, did I? You did uh, not. I did not, yeah. Uh, what are we singing? What are you and Jay going to sing today? We're going well, to si we're gonna do a little sing along. It's one of our biggest hits, it's true. So we're going to do that. And I need the audience to sing along with me. All you have to do is say one word, somebody. That's it, right? Okay, you ready? It starts like are this. Are you done? Am I yeah, are you done? I'm done. I'm the end of the song. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anybody find me somebody to <laughs> Look, now we do choreography. It's Valentine's choreography. Uh-huh. Each morning I wake up, I die a little. Can't barely stand on my feet. Take a look in the mirror and cry, Lord, what you doing to me? I've spent all my years in believing you, but I just can't get no relief. Oh, somebody, 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 can anybody find me somebody to love? Ooh, look at Jay's fingers. It's exciting. <laughs> I work hard every day of my life. I work till I ache in my bones. At the end, I take home my harder name all on my own. I get down on my knees and I start to pray till the tears run down my eyes. Oh, somebody, 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 somebody. Can anybody find me somebody to love? Every day, oh, every day, I try and I try and I try. Me down. They say I'm going crazy. They say I got a lot of water on my brain. No common sense. Nobody else to believe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Listen to the band. There he is. Yeah! Alrighty, you guys ready to sing along again? Because here we go. Sing it at home in your living room. Here we go. Oh, Somebody, 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 can anybody find me somebody to love? 
Oh! I love you. I love you. I love you. And Jay, I love you too. And your magic fingers. Look at that. Aaron and Jay. Yes! Jason. There we go. Catch them. Catch them next uh, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Tuesday at Kerner's Lounge. Yep. Right? Tuesday on the twelfth, and then Thursday Valentine's Day at Birch's Lower. Town. What she said right there. There's the websites right there. Woo! Uh, go see them if you don't have any plans. Seriously, and if you miss us, don't worry. We're gonna put this whole segment on Facebook a little bit later. And don't forget, you can always download a full episodes of our show on our brand new YouTube channel. That's right. What? Just search for the Jason Show and hit subscribe, friends. We'll be right back. Stay yeah! with us. A few minutes ago, Alan Burstyn was sitting there, and now you're sitting there. There we go. I just don't have as fancy of a bag. You know, I know. I wanted that man bag. What was that? I don't know. I wanted to ask him, but that seemed very personal. It, I know. Yeah. No, he really was. I, as I said with Aaron Schwab, you know, we always tell you the real dish when we have a star, and then when they leave. <laughs> we tell you exactly how they really were. Uh, and he was so You're wasting no nice. Time. He, we got done, took pictures with the audience, and, and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't surprise me, you know, that family, when Gene, his bro older brother Gene, is a guest on our show, Gene's the nicest guy ever. Again, I always love supporting local businesses. If you want a cha cha, go to. Uh, <laughs> the, why did I do this? I don't know. That looked. Ew. That was incredibly inc uncomfortable. I'm sorry. This is how I dance. Uh, maybe I need to go. We go need to, to get Alan back. I, I, I think Gene needs to give me lessons. Uh, go to Dance With Us America in Southdale. Uh, and you can. Uh, he's going to be there. He said, what, this in a couple days? Tomorrow he's going to be there. Yeah. Go to their website for more uh, information. Well, we thought this story was funny. Finally, what's old is new again. And we're not talking about fashion and Hollywood remakes. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to feel about this. A staple of bedrooms across the country in the 70s and 80s is making a comeback. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the waterbed. Yeah! Oh, what? This, this audience is loving the waterbed. The guy credited with inventing the waterbed back in, in the 1960s is ready to launch his latest creation that he calls Waterbeds Reimagined. Mm. Dude's name is Chris Hall, <laughs> and he's getting ready to start selling afloat beds. Yeah. I don't know about that name, like but anyway. Tanks? Like a float. He says this one has new materials, making it more comfortable and offering more support. Only one store is selling the afloat beds uh, for around $2,000. Oh. Now, Ooh. have you... Have you, uh, have you ever had a waterbed? I never had one, but I thought when I was a kid and someone had a waterbed that it was like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. You have an experience with a waterbed. I, I had. Uh, that sounds dirtier than it is. It, yeah. I would tell you the story, but I don't want an email from upstairs. So I will. Uh, but I will. Uh, I, I, yeah, I had a waterbed. I was obsessed <laughs> with the 1950s. So um, I, uh, for my birthday, I begged my mom and my dad to give me black and white checkered tile in my room. So I had black and white checkered tile, and I had a water bed. And, um, and let me <laughs> what tell- What kid asked for tile for their birthday? <laughs> Have you met me? I'm weird. So anyway, I'll give you the abridged version of the story. When I think of that water bed, I think of, remember the scene with Colton kissing on the bed? I will tell you- um, I do remember that. Is, uh, let me just say this. Kissing on a waterbed is not comfortable. <laughs> you get seasick, you're trying, you can't, you're trying you're to kiss seasick. and it's like, and it's like the waves and it was my, my first, my first, my first girl, my first girlfriend named Bernice, bless her heart because I don't know why she stayed with me because we were trying to just in like innocently kiss on the waterbed. And it, it was like Captain Ahab, you know, I was like, it's, it's like trying to weigh in Moby Dick, you know, it was like, come on whale. But um, it was, it was horrible. Not good. Me, not her. Audience, you're horrible. Me, not Bernice. My goodness, mean people. I'm sassy. making fun of myself. They are sassy. This audience is sassy. Oh, yeah. they thought something else too. My goodness.
Y'all are nasty. <laughs> I was an innocent little 14 year old. What are we gonna do with this audience? Tomorrow on the show, <laughs> tomorrow on the show, some great ideas for the men in your life on what to get their spouse or significant other for Valentine's Day. That new waterbed, that'd be great. Join us tomorrow. But, that, but right now, thanks to our guest, Aaron Schwab, Alan Burstyn, and all of you in this great audience. If you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody.